welcome to this Thursday, January 11th, Market Watchers Live show with your hosts, Tom Bowley and Aaron Swenlin. For those of you joining us for the first time today, welcome to the show. And for our regulars, welcome back. In today's market action, very, very strong day today thus far with the small caps leading. Taking a look at the various charts, you can see across the top the major indices here in the U.S., all four up in record territory. But the Russell 2000 has risen about 20 points already today. Very, very strong move and playing a little bit of catch up with some of its other uh, major indices. Um, as you look, the uh, 10 year Treasury yield is uh, roughly flat today. It opened up a little bit, but uh, kind of followed back down after the uh, little bit of uh, weakness that we saw in the yield yesterday afternoon. Energy is the group leading today. Crude oil up near $64 a barrel. Uh, reaching the highest level it's seen in a few years, and that is spurring a lot of buying in the energy space. The uh, renewable energy space really on fire today, as you can see, the DW Cree, the Renewable Energy Total Return Index, up several uh, points today. Very, very strong move to the upside. And internationally, three uh, different markets take a look at uh, Italy and Spain, both up over 1% today. Um, and uh, I'm going to switch over to a six month chart and you can see how significant this move recently has been on both of these uh, both of these indexes. And then uh, Mexico was the only international ETF actually that was lower. So we switch over to the six month chart and you can see that the major US indices have been straight up. But if you look at Italy here, we actually had been going sideways to down for about the last four months just before 2018. We've had this huge breakout. And if you look at Spain, very similar type of uh, trading action where we were trading down and then broke out in 2018 and now moving straight higher. And with that, I'm going to bring in my co-host, Aaron. How are you doing this morning, Aaron? I'm doing quite good. How are you? I'm not doing too bad. I tell you what, I'm still reflecting back on our guest yesterday, Bruce Frazier. Yes. Such a great segment. And um, I want to thank everybody for the feedback that we got because it was just uh, unbelievably almost unanimous that uh, everyone was really interested in all that we went through and especially taking some of the theory that uh, Bruce talks about and actually applying it to current real-time charts. If you didn't get a chance to see that show, you may want to go back to YouTube and uh, review it, but that was a great, great uh, show yesterday, I thought. With, uh, oh, absolutely. He's he's so so great to hang out with anyway. And the amount of knowledge, I mean, everybody had, we had so many questions yesterday that he barely got through his presentation. I think he has quite a few more charts to show us. So we'll definitely be having him back. Yeah, no doubt about it. He actually helped me with one of my trades. Uh, for those of you that were here yesterday, we were talking about Generac Holdings, GNRC. And I'll talk about that one later in the show with uh, the anatomy of a trade, but I'm going to let you, Aaron, get into the uh, upcoming schedule and uh, our agenda for today. Absolutely. Well, just tomorrow, we're going to see Tom give us a workshop and it's going to be kind of a stock market forecast and we'll have to see what we're looking at there. Stock charts outlook is going to be Saturday with Greg Schnell. Don't want to miss that one. And I know this is going to make everybody so sad, but January 15th is Martin Luther King Day. And so with the market closed, we won't be here for our show. And with that, let's look at the, the agenda today, Thursday's agenda, January 11th, scooter updates. I'm going to give you a scooter report shortly and let you know what's been moving. We have a new segment called Drilling Down, and no, it doesn't just mean it's about oil. <laughs> so you'll get to see what that's all about as we get there. Of course, 10 and 10 to 1, and the very first stock is going to be Electroscientific Industries, ESIO. And then we'll finish it off today with our popular segment, Anatomy of a Trade. And with that, I am going to, let's see. Well, I'm going to hand it back to you, Tom. I think you had some interesting uh, news to share. I know the jobs report came in, uh, not what uh, was expected, the jobless claims. Yeah, jobless claims were a little bit uh, higher than expected. I think it was 261,000. The market was looking for 245,000, so not a great um, number there, but the uh, inflation, you know, there's been some inflationary concerns. Uh, both the uh, December PPI and the core PPI came in well below expectations. Uh, they both came in at z uh, minus 0.1 percent, 
and the market in both instances were expecting a rise of 0.2 percent. So uh, inflationary concerns kind of, you know, put on at least on the back burner for now. But you're right, the initial jobless claims did come in a little bit higher than expected. But the average, if you look at a moving average over the last several weeks or months, continues to drop. And I think that's what most investors are focusing on. And the 10-year Treasury yield yesterday, I've got that up here on your chart. You can see printed a black candle off of an uptrend after a breakout. And it's also very close to a key resistance level. I'm just going to take this chart out a little bit further so that you can see the uh, high that was established back in uh, late winter, early spring here in, uh, well, first December, but then again in March. So right about this 260 to 262 area, we know we have some overhead resistance and we got up almost to 260 yesterday before reversing. So there, you know, in the short term, we still got a little bit of upside on the yield, but that, uh, you know, getting close to resistance and then turning down with that black candle may uh, make a little or make some traders a little nervous in the financial space. Uh, which has been running up pretty nicely on the uh, back of higher yields, but also has uh, some issues. If I pull up the XLF, you'll see first that there is a uh, negative divergence in play. So we have been moving higher, which is great, but you can see that the, net, the uh, negative divergence is pretty easy to spot, lower MACD with higher prices. We don't know whether the XLF is going to continue to go higher. I mean, it's very possible that on a move like this, you just keep going higher and eventually that MACD breaks out above the prior high and that negative divergence is gone. But I don't know that we would necessarily want to count on that at this point in time. So watch for a reversing candle, knowing that the yield is up near resistance. If we get a reversal here on the XLF, we could then begin to see some rotation out of the group. And if you look back to mid-November, after an earlier negative divergence, higher prices, lower MACD, we ended up going all the way back down, testing the 50-day moving average and price support, and we saw the MACD fall all the way back down to centerline support. Now we're very stretched again, and we've had a big run, and market uh, rotation is kind of the name of the game uh, during a bull market, so we want to be careful here. This has been a really strong uh, move to the upside. The other thing to be careful about and to watch closely is that now that the financials have made this big run, and if we take a look at the banks, for instance, uh, we've seen a big run in the banks, and a lot of earnings reports start tomorrow in the banking space. I think uh, J.P. Morgan reports tomorrow, Wells Fargo, maybe PNC, a couple others. But over the next week to 10 days, there are going to be a ton of banks that will be reporting. It's going to be interesting to see whether or not the market uh, reacts negatively. In other words, is uh, you know if, if we do see a number of positive surprises, has the market already built that in? to the current price. And when you see a move like this from mid-November through mid-January, where the uh, bank index rises from 430 to almost 500, that's uh, what, 65 points, which is roughly about 15% in two months. That's a big move in banks. So obviously a lot is already uh, being um, put on the line here. A lot, a lot of bets being made that we're going to see some strong results. Now the question is, is it going to be a buy on the rumor sell on the news type of event. We'll know that here over the next uh, couple of days to a week as many of these banks begin to report their quarterly results. A uh, couple of other areas you mentioned, um, you know, energy's just been going crazy and crude oil um, broke out, uh, I think it was up to $64 a barrel earlier today or close to it. And you can see that the XLE just continues to move. And I think from a long-term perspective, Let's see if we can get that to come back up again here. There we go. From a long-term perspective, you can see overhead resistance on the XLE was established at about 75 and or, or 75 and a half, 76 in December of 2016. And another key reaction high was up around 77 and a half in April, May of 2015. And you can see that's where we are now. The MACD looks great. I think that the fundamentals, the fact that we've got rising crude oil prices, is, uh, is very bullish. I think eventually we're going to make this breakout to the upside above these two levels. And if we pull up a longer term chart on crude oil, which is dollar sign WTIC, you can see that we hesitated for a while back in uh, May, June 2015, right at about $62, $63 a barrel. And we have not been able to negotiate that since until this week. 
So we're get, making a big move, big breakout here. And I think that could give the uh, entire energy group a lift and maybe take that XLE up above um, the uh, resistance level that we were just talking about. Uh, a couple of other energy related things to discuss. One is the renewable energy space. And when you look at the renewable energy equipment total stock market index, you see another breakout, yet another breakout. And what's interesting about this group is when you compare, uh, actually, I'm going to look at it a different way here. So bear with me. Let's pull up crude oil. Let's take a look at a weekly chart. <clears throat> I'm going to go back even a little bit further. Let's go back uh, seven years. And I'm going to compare this to the price of crude oil, compare it to renewable energy. And I'm not going to stop there. I'm just going to move this up so it's closer to the actual chart of crude oil. Um, I'm not going to stop there, though. I want to also take a look at the correlation. So this will tell us whether or not uh, crude oil and renewable energy have a correlation, you know, positive or negative correlation, kind of check out the relationship there. And so let's go ahead and adjust that and boom. All right, so the long term, and this is what's interesting, and, this, and last year at the beginning of the year, I thought that renewable energy stocks could have a pretty big move, and I'll explain why. First of all, anytime crude oil is high or getting higher, renewable energy stocks tend to be more in focus because crude oil prices, you know, it, we talk about it just being too expensive and we want other alternatives. And so a lot of times renewable energy space will uh, get a lot more love during periods of high energy prices or rising crude oil prices. So here you can see back uh, when the DW Cree, the renewable energy index began, and this was back in uh, 2012, you can see that we were already at a pretty high level of crude oil, and you can see what happened. The renewable energy stocks uh, just soared during that period, and then once crude oil started getting cheaper and cheaper, there was less focus on renewable energy, and this group started going lower. Now, the, the final part of this chart down here at the bottom, this is the correlation, and while it's not a perfect correlation, it's not, you know, if it was perfectly positively correlated, you would see this reading at one all the way across here, meaning that crude oil and renewable energy stocks go hand in hand. Well, that's not the case, but there is a pretty strong correlation. As you can see, most of the time is spent above zero. And there are periods when that you get into where they do kind of go hand in hand. And it makes sense to me, uh, common sense, because again, as crude oil is rising, you would think there would be more and more attention being paid to these renewable energy stocks. A um, couple of things to, to look for when we get sudden spikes in crude oil prices, even when we were downtrending back here for a couple of years, 2014 to 2016 in the renewable energy space, there were pops um, where we did see movement to the upside in crude oil prices. And sometimes we got some pretty nice pops in this index as a result. But what I noticed at the end of 2016 was that this group, uh, or the crude oil prices were starting to rise and holding on to some key moving averages and continuing to push higher. And yet, as we went into 2017, there was no, no love really being shown for the renewable energy stocks. So I kind of felt like we were breaking out of a bottoming reverse uh, head and shoulders on, the, on crude oil, which would lead to higher crude oil prices. And so at some point, it just seemed to make sense that we would finally get a push up in renewable energy. It didn't happen at the beginning of 2017, but you can see that it didn't take too long. And by the middle part of 2017, this group was up and running. And now that we're making a further breakout, take a look at the renewable energy space continuing to move higher. So I, I know I mentioned earlier this week that the two best performing industry groups from last year, one of which was renewable energy, that was the best performer, and home construction was the second. But of the two, I think this is the group, the renewable energy space, that has the best chance to continue its run. And part of it is because of the fundamental reason that crude oil prices are breaking out. And the second is that this is a group that is performing extremely well, technically. So every pullback is being bought or breaking out the new highs. So just something to keep in the back of your mind there. Uh, taking a look at a couple of other 
key areas of the market that I mentioned earlier. First, let's pull up Italy, EWI. This is the ETF. Now, one thing to always keep in mind about these uh, foreign ETFs is that this is not the index. This is the ETF, and the ETF can be heavily influenced by currency translations. So you've got to be careful there. You might be getting a breakout, for instance, on the EWI and not on the underlying index or vice versa, just depending on which way dollar the dollar is moving uh, relative to that uh, foreign currency. So here you can see, though, that the e e uh, WI is moving substantially higher after going sideways for a while. I find that to be bullish. And the EWP, which is Spain's ETF, you can see the same thing after trending lower, sideways lower, really for the last half, maybe a little bit more of 2017. 2018 has gotten off with a bang to the upside. So very, very bullish action here. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Well, let's move over to something uh, domestic, the XLI industrials. In addition to the energy group doing well, you can see the industrials continuing to shoot straight up almost every single day. And an interesting group within the industrials. This is a group that's kind of been left, um, you know, kind of on the sidelines throughout much of the bull market the past few years. But the Marine Transportation Index, all of a sudden, acting very bullishly. A big move, pullback holds the rising 20-day moving average, and another big move to the upside. But you can see that there's some overhead resistance. But more important than the daily chart, let's stretch this out and look at the weekly chart and take a look at all of the resistance. I could annotate here just to give you the visual, but uh, you probably can see it just from looking at the chart, that this is a group that could be on the verge of a very significant breakout. So here was a clear price support back at the beginning of 2015, bounced a couple of times, and then boom, we fell apart at the end of 2015. And look at all the attempts to get through this 240 area. Right now we're sitting at 241. Now we have made intra-week breakouts only to fail. So it's Thursday, we haven't made a close yet above 240, but this is a group that is beginning to show some pretty good signs. And when you look at a, a um, industry group like the renewable energy and the way they underperformed for so long. And now you see a, a group like this, marine transportation, a breakout here I think would be very significant and something to pay attention to. So yeah, this, uh, Tom, just a quick comment. You can sure. see a double bottom there at the end. And if you were to measure that, if you got that breakout above that neckline, that would put you almost exactly at that um, high that was you know, back in uh, what, March, May, June. Yeah, so it's interesting to see. So the, the breakout seems completely uh, plausible, and that would be your next area of overhead resistance. Yeah, and I actually, this is what I look at. And when we get into, when I get into the uh, stock market forecast tomorrow, I'm going to talk about a number of groups that maybe, some of which maybe have participated some in the bull market, but a number haven't, uh, or they haven't performed nearly as much as some of the others. And bull markets are just made up of this constant rotation where a group will lead for a period of time and then just kind of sit back, move on to the sidelines and not really do much. And then all of a sudden comes back to life again. And as a trader, short-term trader, spotting these moves as they're just starting can be very rewarding financially. So this is a group definitely to keep an eye on. Uh, just a couple more, and then we're gonna move into the um, scooter update. But I also wanted to show you the airlines. Let's start first with the daily, because this is another group that's doing really well today within inside of the industrials. You can see the breakout. You can see that over the past six to eight weeks, really a nice move up, mostly holding above this rising 20-day moving average. And now we're breaking out, but we're doing so with higher prices and a lower MACD, negative divergence, and we're getting close to a key price resistance just above 300. Um, you know, 303, 305, something like that. And right now we're at 299.41. So we've had a really nice move in the airlines. And I'm not saying it's going to stop here, but you do have to recognize that we have some overhead resistance. If we were to make the breakout, this would be incredibly bullish, though, because if you look back to 2015, beginning of 2015, airlines were sitting at about 280. Now we're sitting at 300. This is, again, this is a group that was very strong for a period during the bull market has gone sideways really mostly for the last three years. We've had a couple of nice periods, six to nine months where we've made big moves, had some pullbacks along the way as well.
But when you look at the last three months, just kind of squeeze all this action together, you see that really that airlines have not participated in the bull market for the last three years. So a breakout would be bullish. Now, common sense would also tell me, well, if crude oil prices are going higher, why would airlines be breaking out? Well, crude oil is a part, is a component of the expense side of the equation for airlines. But the other thing to keep in mind is when crude oil prices are rising, it's an indication of strong economic conditions globally. Um, that's what drives energy prices higher. It's increasing demand. So yes, expenses could be going up, but at the same time, if the global economic picture is brightening, airlines are going to be able to boost their top line and you're going to have a lot more traffic and their pricing power goes up. So I, I pay attention to the charts. I mean, it's nice to sit back and, and debate all these things fundamentally, but if a stock or an index like this breaks out after a long period of consolidation, I would find it particularly bullish. One last chart to bring up, and this is one that I mentioned. I'll be talking about this again tomorrow as well. Um, but the brewers, I know this is part of the uh, consumer staples, which is more defensive, but this group has really been performing well of late. And for the first time in a while, you can see we are now moving back above that declining 20-week moving average. And the important part of it for me is that it's also occurring right where I would want to see it, right at price support. So here was your price resistance, the breakout. We went soaring for another year, and then we have used about the last 15 months or so to pull all the way back down, test this price support, print a hammer, and now we're starting to turn back up again. This could be the start of a lengthy uptrend where that now rising or soon to be rising 20-week moving average holds a support. Definitely worth keeping an eye on. So with that, uh, I'm going to wrap this section up, and I know we're going to move over into the scooter update, and I'm going to let you take over, Aaron. Just make sure that you've got your, your unmuted. There we go. I'm going to first start, and I'm going to show you uh, what the scooter actually is. I think most of our regular viewers are familiar. Uh, but it is weighted toward the medium to long term. It's a stock charts, charts technical rank. You'll only find it here. And this is how the score, that scooter number is calculated. So if you wanna read more about it, you just can go into chart school. Uh, you could go over here and do a search on scooter, which is how I got to it very quickly. So I just wanted everybody to know what that is before I start talking about them. Now, I, I usually go over in the market update and look at the top up, top, top down as far as large caps. And you know, you're gonna get that top 10 uh, and of course top down. And uh, so normally I would just go through that during the market update, but since we're doing a segment on this, I'm gonna show you a, a few things. Uh, I'm gonna get a little bit more into the, into the weeds, I guess you might wanna say. Get into a little more detail. So there you go, that's where I found our scooter reports. And you can find them for, you know, you can use uh, any of these uh, universes, as I like to call them, to search on. Uh, but I'm going to stick to the large caps. And what I like to see is not necessarily who has the high rank. I mean, that's great. Uh, you want you want to invest in in uh, a stock or you know or ETF that has a high scooter because you know, medium to long term, it's strong or it wouldn't have that high ranking. However, when I'm looking for uh, you know, what might be going on in the market. I like to go by the change, you know, and you can see here I've got, <laughs> it first goes uh, um, ascending. So these are the big losers right now. Uh, and you can hover here over the symbol to see. And based on that uh, big decline, I'm not surprised to see it near the, the it, to see it at the top of the top down. But I wanna, I wanna concentrate on what's doing well not what's doing badly. So I went ahead and I just, by, by change, I set it up and right now our big movers are listed here. So I had actually gone through and I looked at, um, at a few of the ones that were at the top about 45 minutes ago and they're not the same, but uh, that's no problem because I'll go ahead and look at what is here uh, because I didn't actually annotate or anything like that. So we're gonna start here with Discovery Communications. It's our big mover right now. So I wanna go ahead and look at what's going on with that. What's interesting, everybody should note as well, is look at what sector 
is really taking over the big scooter ranking movers uh, energy. Not surprising, right? We've been looking at uh, a pretty nice energy move today. But let's start with a, a cyclical discovery communications. And there you go. See, there's the big scooter move at that point. Uh, you know, when I look at this, the first thing I would note, of course, is an overbought PMO. But we got a little bit of a whipsaw buy signal. And I, I think those are positive because it tells you you got the pullback. <clears throat> and even with the pullback of this uh, length, we still managed to not lose that much in the PMO. So that tells me there's some strength there. And of course, the scooter moving like this also tells me there's some strength in the intermediate to long term, as well as a comparison amongst uh, the other large caps, of course, it's doing better than the rest of them right now as far as the change in rank. So you can see a really nice breakout. I think you could make a case for a, a kind of an extended uh, flag here. And now we've gotten that breakout. So that's really the nice thing about these scooter reports. Uh, it might bring some things on the radar to you that maybe you didn't see before. Uh, we're clearly at some important overhead resistance here, uh, but I think we're gonna probably beat that out based on this nice move of the scooter and this recent buy signal. Uh, I would probably not jump into anything with a PMO that's this overbought. However, if I were holding, I would have I would hold through this and, and see whether we can get through that resistance and move up from there. So let's go ahead. I'm going to take us back to the report again. I'm going to talk about energy in a little bit. So I'm going to go over to Xerox. And here we go. Look at that breakout. <laughs> Gap up, um, bringing it right above this area of uh, what was resistance. I'm going to annotate this one just a little bit for us. All righty. Oh, that's too bright. There we go. All right. So really nice breakout, obviously, above this area of what previously was resistance. Now we're starting to look at this area of resistance, where it matches up with these tops. Uh, the bottom over here, and then, of course, the next one up here. So I would, uh, I mean, the next area of overhead resistance is right here. Again, this isn't one you, you necessarily would jump into. However, it would have shown up on my radar back here when we got that uh, curl on the PMO and had it rising and then got that buy signal. So that would have been the time to get in. I might have been a little concerned based on um, that scooter level, but you can see it was already heading up. OBV tops were heading up. So it it was already setting up to, to look pretty good here. I mean, look at the um, tops on the OBV and then compare those tops right here. Uh, so that was a nice bullish confirmation. And then we saw consolidation rather than a huge drop down. So this one looks very nice. Of course, like I said, it's a little late to jump in on it, um, which can be a little bit of a problem, of course, when you're looking at these big movers, because we might see these kinds of breakouts, but not always, not always. So let me go down here to, let's see, I didn't look at Mylan. I did look at ATVI, Activision Blizzard. It, it was leading at that point. Now, this is one where we're getting a really nice uh, setup. And look, I mean, okay, I'm going to annotate this because there's a lot going on and it. I think it's uh, mostly, well, pretty much all good at this point. And I think this one uh, does have an opportunity, you know, if you wanted to get in on this, I, I'm not buying it. I'm not making a recommendation. Um, I'm just going to show you why I think it's, uh, it's a pretty good um, setup here. So I'm going to put in that uh, resistance line. So of course we opened above this area. We're staying above this area and look at what we have here as far as a chart formation. Uh, can anybody name this in the uh, chat room? I think everybody knows. Uh, reverse head and shoulders. Uh, I really like that. It's coming in after some consolidation. It did uh, technically come down and then up into that pattern. So I think it's viable. The measurement, of course, is very nice because if it executes, which it already has, so you can call it a head and shoulders. There we go. Very nice. So we measure this pattern. Uh, let's see. 
and that would bring us up to, wow. So we have 57, 50, let's just make it even 67. So that's a 10 point uh, target for Activision Blizzard. So nice setup. Look at the PMO rising. Uh, the, the latest reading is higher than these previous tops. So this one's setting up pretty nicely. And then there's that big scooter move here. It's already been uh, above that 30 and sitting in that 50 to 70 level. And that's, that's certainly uh, fine. I like to see uh, stocks come in above that 75. Uh, but as far as an investment is concerned, that's not going to be the uh, make or break as far as my analysis, though. All righty. Okay, so you know we know that energy is having a really great day. So how am I going to um, use the scooter report to find out more about that? Well, of course you can, uh, as I did here, you can uh, make those, um, you can sort. And then I'm going to sort on the sector because I know that energy is the one doing well. So I'm going to go down and find it. I think I had it on the second page. Yep. So let's see who the big movers are in just the energy sector. Actually, before I do that, I do want to show you one thing because I do have a chart of the XLE so that you can see why I'm interested in what's going on here. This is our uh, Market Watchers live chart list. This is where you'll find uh, many of the uh, charts that we go through. Oh, wrong one. All right. So we know energy is having uh, is doing well. Uh, I'm looking at this chart and and really I, I'm going to pull it up on a weekly in a little bit. But again, what what do we see here as far as a chart pattern? Left shoulder, uh, head, right shoulder, nice inverse after this. It's coming down into this pattern, uh, so that's good to see a reversal pattern for the upside come in after a move to the downside. That's what you want to see. Uh, you can see we've already got a break now above the neckline and a measurement of this pattern. Well, that's that's pretty hefty. I don't know if I'd be looking for a 25 point move at this point, um, but certainly a test of overhead resistance uh, could be good at this point for energy. So this is a, a sector that is doing well. You can see I got that PMO buy signal here on the formation of this flag right before that consolidation. You can see that OBV was confirming this move with rising bottoms and rising tops. And of course, um, I don't have the scooter on this one, but I know that the scooter has been rising just like we saw on uh, the scooter report. So that gives you sort of an idea of uh, what energy is doing, uh, You know what we could possibly expect. I think at this point we should expect uh, higher prices, uh, but I, I would like to see it hold this area of support. So we'll have to see. We got the breakout. It probably will need to come back down toward that breakout area, possibly a little bit lower just to um, you know blow off some of this uh, very much straight up rally here. So let's look at that scooter report again in particular and the energy stocks. So right now, the, the top ones, and again, they've been changing around because I had uh, some different ones to look at. Um, so I will probably go in and look at those, but let's look at Apache. It is the, the number one right mo mover to the upside as far as energy. So let's take a quick peek at that one, APA. And you know, with, when I look at this, the one thing that kind of bothers me, you know, we've got that XLE chart to compare to to some degree. And what did we see? We had that inverse head and shoulders. We just got a nice breakout. Um, you know, when I look at this, we're not quite there. We've got that resistance level to break through. But, you know, this last rally was not as uh, successful, I'd say, as XLEs necessarily. So, uh, and we're not getting that breakout above resistance. However, uh, we're getting the scooter to show some uh, movement here. So one of the things I might do with the report is not just uh, not take the big movers. Kind of let's look at who the strength, where the strength is right now in energy. So how might we do that? I'm going to just go to the top. And instead of, of measuring by um, scooter uh, change, I'm going to go by top to bottom, and then we're going to sort on energy. 
Let's see if that pulls it together for us. And of course, energy is on page two, so we'll go over here. Let's see if we got it to sort the proper way. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, it did. Okay, so here are our top uh, two, three uh, energy stocks at this point that are sitting at the top as far as scooter value. We're not getting a lot of movement, but when you're sitting at the top like this, you probably won't see a lot of movement. So we know that that particular sector is strong. So let's look for those stocks that have a high batting average, so to speak. So I'm going to show you, let's see, let's see, Eco Petrol. Ra nice, nice uh, rally going on here, obviously. And it does look like it's getting ready to take a little bit of a pause here in the middle. Uh, it's no wonder that we're seeing a scooter value of this height. Notice though, when did it enter the, the quote unquote hot zone? It was back at the end of October. It was after a PMO buy signal. It came in as uh, volume was starting to come in. So this is when it would have landed on uh, my radar with my scan. And I would have looked at this and thought, hmm, this looks pretty good. And so we would have ended up uh, getting in over here. I'll, I'll say, I'll give myself some time. It might've taken me until it did this turn right over here above the signal line. But in any case, uh, the PMO uh, did help to get you in on this rally. Kind of tough to hang, it, hang out in this consolidation zone for that long, but. So that is EC, Eco Petrol. And what are the other top ones right now in our scooter energy leaders? And here's another one. So all of these you can notice in terms of comparison to XLE, the reason they're at the top with our scooter ranking is because they've been doing better than the XLE. So they're gonna be the strong ones to look at if you wanna maybe get in on something that's already showing some strength. However, as you can see, looking at these top ranking stocks, a lot of them have already made their move. And so of course that isn't necessarily helpful, but it's nice to see when you get these moves, these big moves are really when you're supposed to, that's when you're gonna get uh, your warning or your attention flag, something good's getting ready to happen here. So that's why we generally look at which ones are the big movers, not necessarily the ones that are sitting on the top. But it's not, you wanna still consider um, buys with uh, stocks with high scooter values because that already says they're doing well as far as uh, relative strength to the other uh, energy stocks or large caps. And it also tells you that they have, like I said, a high batting average they have internal strength. So you're setting up in a place where you can expect uh, bullish conclusions to chart patterns, to breakouts, because we do have this really, um, you're seeing that strength, <clears throat> not just uh, internally, but also relatively. So I had one other, let's see, I had a few. I know this one I think was uh, requested earlier for uh, 10 and 10. So I'm going to look at this very quickly. Uh, actually, I think uh, I think you might be going over this one, Tom. I can't remember. What I noticed when I looked at a lot of these stocks on um, scooter movers, uh, you know, because you can see it was near the top for energy earlier, but the move is just not as intense now as some of the others. <clears throat> but it was on my uh, radar earlier because it was uh, leading on those big movers. So a few things here. I like that we've got PMO bottoms that are rising. The volume pattern isn't really um, that, I'm, I mean, I'm not really happy with the fact that, that the OBV is trending down, but at the same time during this period of time, it's consolidation, but it was also uh, trending down to some degree here. But we found support right about here. And you can draw that across. Um, I'm not annotating it. And it's held that support. And now if you, well, I'm going to just annotate this. I have just a moment. This will be our last one. So if you annotate this, let's see, that's that's good. Um, what I want you to see is that declining tops trend line. So 
you know, we got that spot where we started to form um, some support at that gap. Um, and then, you know, our tops were completely moving down. Well, this technically is a bearish pattern, correct? Uh, descending triangle. So your expectation actually would be a breakdown. And not only is this a bearish pattern, but the 50 is below the 200. So when I see this, and it came to my radar from the scooter report, I think uh, very bullish thoughts. And the reason being is despite being in what you might consider a bear market configuration, decision point considers that with the 50 below the 200, and then you have a bearish pattern follow after that and you get a breakout anyway. So to me, that says there's some, some really good internal strength going here and something to keep in mind. The next area of overhead resistance is up here at $10. That would still be a tidy little um, uh, sum to make, uh, a little profit there, uh, just it, for it to get to that area of overhead resistance. But when I see this kind of strength, you can see the 50 getting ready to pop above the 200. Uh, there you go. I think this one is setting up nicely. So that's how we can use the scooter report to find uh, these these uh, trading opportunities, but also a way to look and see where uh, the strength is based on scooter move changes. So that's pretty much what I got for us on the scooter report. I pretty much covered uh, first, how do you get to the report? I, those were some of the large cap movers I looked at. Uh, we also went ahead and looked at energy since we know they're having uh, energy's doing great. And here are the list of stocks that I looked at for that. And this uh, slide and report will be in the Market Watchers Live recap later today. Sounds and good. That, I think uh, I know we had an announcement uh, one more time about a book sale. Well, we've got drilling down. I think. Yeah, I do need to help you. Uh, yeah, we do need to get to your new segment, drilling down. My bad. Looking at the okay. schedule, and I've marked off too many. <laughs> <laughs> what was interesting when you were going through that scooter report, I couldn't help but think back to our discussion yesterday with Bruce Bruce Fraser on a couple of those stocks that you looked at. One of them being Apache, uh, APA. So I thought what I'd do, I'm going to get into the. Uh, well, I tell you what, maybe we'll make a note in mailbag and take a look at that later. Yes, uh, the Apache stock, because that one is, you know, we had a real interesting discussion when a stock is moving down. Is it, um, you know, just in that reaccumulation phase for on the short side, or is it more of a reversing kind of a situation? You know, the, the opposite, and we talked about this more yesterday because we've been in a bull market, but we talked about, you know, when a stock is moving up and then goes into a sideways pattern, is it reaccumulation or is it distribution? And it's kind of hard to tell sometimes. You get some clues, and Bruce was talking a little bit about the clues during those periods. But then ultimately, the real clue is when you finally get that breakout to the upside. And it just looked like to me that Apache stock uh, was, was um, kind of in the reverse formation. It had been in a downtrend for a while and literally now has been going sideways for a while. And is this a, um, you know, a reaccumulation of shorts, you mm -hmm. know, during that? the sideways phase, or is it a reversing kind of a thing where now we're starting to see accumulation? And I think, I guess, the next move is what's going to tell us. Right. Um, but, uh, we can talk about that one a little bit more, but let's get into the drilling down. This is a new segment. Um, and I thought what I would do is just show you, and this is assuming, for instance, if I'm looking for maybe a potential trade and I don't have anything in mind, you know, how might I go about looking to try to find something? And of course, the, where I start almost all the time is with the sector summary and the industry summary. Um, so for instance, and you have to understand my style too, is that I don't like really like to chase. So when I look and I see, okay, energy has been doing really well. And let's say I, I go to, uh, to the last month and I see the best sector has been energy up 11%. Well, that tells me obviously energy is doing well, but I don't know that I would necessarily want to jump in and chase the energy space after it's already made 11% move in one month. I would be more interested knowing what that a bull market rotates, looking into some areas maybe that haven't participated quite as much. And when I look at some of the more aggressive areas like the financials and technology, uh, cyclicals and industrials, technology and financials kind of stick out to me that they haven't really participated as much. And as I pointed out earlier with the financials, I'm a little concerned 
about that group right now because we've got the overhead resistance on the 10-year treasury yield approaching. And so that might throw me toward the technology group. So I'm going to start by drilling down in the technology sector. And from there, I've still got this one month period selected. And now I'm looking for, okay, within technology, uh, clearly electronic office equipment, electronic equipment, internet stocks, computer services, these are all groups that have been performing very well within technology, but what hasn't? And again, if I go back down and I look, I look down to computer hardware space and I look at mobile telecommunications. Now I've been following mobile telecommunications and I'm already somewhat um, interested in looking at this group. But here's a chart, first of the daily. So you can see that we have been down, or excuse me, uptrending after what appears to be an exhaustion gap to the downside off of a downtrend on very heavy volume. For exhaustion gaps, that's what you wanna see. You wanna see volume that is at, or maybe the heaviest volume on the chart, um, because literally it's, everyone's throwing the kitchen sink and they're like, okay, I can't take it anymore, I'm just getting out. And so that to me looked like it could be a capitulatory um, exhaustion gap to the downside. And now we move back up through the moving averages, get to the 50, pull back, print a higher low, and then we continue to do so here throughout this uptrend. Now the last couple of days we've pulled back after getting up to a key resistance area. I've been saying this 329, 330 area to me is where I think it uh, kind of the, the, the pedal hits the metal. You know, are we going to make that breakout or are we going to roll over? And so far we did print a black candle, which tells us in the short term, we're probably gonna pull over or roll over and we did. But now we've got this trend line that we're testing. So I'm looking at this thinking, okay, that's probably a uh, capitulatory move to the downside, exhaustion gap. Now we're trending higher and I'm getting a pullback close to this trend line support. So it kind of makes sense that this would be an area that I would consider. So from here, you go back in and if you click on the link for mobile telecommunications, it'll give you all the stocks. And again, we are still looking at the stocks with the performance over the last month. Well, we could start at the top and you know chase a company that's up 32% in a month, but that's not really my style. So once again, I'm gonna go down toward the bottom. Now this one, a stock that's down 24% in a month probably is not healthy. Technically, I don't probably only have to look at a chart to know that, but I would then start to drill down and look at some individual stocks. So uh, Shenandoah Telecommunications, S-H-E-N, this one off of a downtrend, you can see the MACD actually is starting to print positive. And we had some prior resistance that we broke out above on heavy volume between $32 and $33. And that's right where we are right now. So I could make an argument that a stock like this, now it's probably not meeting my volume. You know, I like to have certain liquidity on the stocks that I trade. I like to see a stock that averages at least two to 300,000 shares a day. This one, really struggles just to get up to that level on a daily basis. I wouldn't say it's illiquid, but it's probably not as liquid as stocks that I would prefer to take a look at. Some other stocks within this space, uh, go ahead and pull these up for you. Some of them look better to me than others, uh, but one is DCM. Um, and this one after, you can see that big black candle at the top coming back down, failing at the 20 day, volume's weak, uh, the volume trends are weak, selling off on big volume, rising on lesser volume. So I'm going to pass right by this one. This one doesn't really do anything for me. Uh, let's see, we go to, to uh, Crown Castle, CCI. This one looks a little interesting, especially if we could get a reversing candle, because overall we've got an uptrend. And yes, we have failed to hold on to price support. And yes, we failed to hold on gap support so far. But I still think that when a stock is generally uptrending and we're in a bull market, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. So I'm, I'd be looking for something that would make me more interested in this stock on a uh, short-term basis. When I look at the weekly chart, notice the last high coincided with a higher reading on the MACD. So if we could put in some kind of reversing candle, either between today and tomorrow, get back up above that 20 day, or excuse me, 20 week moving average, which has provided great support or if maybe we finish like this with a candle similar to this this week, but then next week, maybe a bullish engulfing or a piercing candle to get back up above that 20 week, I think CCI would look, look kind of interesting. And then just a couple more real quick, SBAC. This is SBA Communications. I think the gap support, price support area, this is one that I traded recently and I didn't like the move back down below the 20 days. So I ended up getting out with a very small gain, but 
I think that you've got the top of gap support and the bottom of gap support right in here. And you can see recently we just bounced off this 156 area. So this and this one also happens to be on my strong earnings chart list that I trade off of. So this is a stock that I would be very interested in. While the moves to the downside look horrible, the volume really isn't that great. I'm going to shorten this um, period just a tad so that uh, we can, let's just look at the last three months, get rid of that big volume bar. So that makes all the other volume bars look meaningless. But you can see on this last pu pullback, volume hasn't been huge. We're past the halfway point today, so maybe we're going to do a million shares today. But again, it was nothing compared to the, the two, two and a half million that we were seeing every day on the way up. So I think this is an area gap, gap support, this gap support zone where I do think SBAC could make a turn. So this is one I'm still interested, I would still be interested in. Um, maybe one or two more that look kind of interesting. Iridium, I-R-D-M communications. I see equal highs here coming across and higher lows coming up. So I think we've got a really nice ascending triangle that is continuing to uh, be in play here. Um, ultimately, what you want to see is a break above 1275, which would measure up another $2.75 to 1550. Uh, and maybe one last one. Let's take a look at a big one that probably everybody is familiar with. Let's take a look at uh, T-Mobile, TMUS. And T-Mobile kind of following along with what we just looked at on the Mobile Telecommunications Index. Big gap down, huge reversal, but we need to get back through 50, or excuse me, $66. And from a longer term perspective, I think this is a really nice chart. Very strong uptrend. I think we're going through a period of consolidation that's been lasting months. So ultimately a breakout over recent highs, I think would be very bullish. Look at the weekly MACD, which is now back down to the center line. And so with that, uh, we will wrap up our first drilling down segment. Um, definitely at the end of the show, let us know what you think of this new segment. And uh, it'll you know, vary from time to time as we look at the market. There'll be different situations that evolve and probably different sectors, different industry groups, and different stocks that we will take a look at. But there's a recap of what you can be uh, looking at, things that we talked about. So with that, uh, Aaron, I know you were going to mention the book. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry I cut you off, but uh, we do have what we're calling the book of the month. Right now, we have a very deep discount on the Stock Traders Almanac for 2018, uh, published this last September, October. And it, it's, great, um, it's a great tool to have uh, over the year just to give you some longer term trends, that sort of thing. So right now it's 40% off. Uh, just go to store.stockcharts.com uh, and you should find uh, our store and be able to pick this up among other great buys. And with that, I guess we will move on to the 10 and 10. And... I know I took up a little too much time on my segment, so we're getting started a little late, but I know we'll be able to, to get through pretty quick. I know Tom and I'm, I know you can do it. <laughs> so yes, we're starting off with ESIO, Electroscientific Industries. Yeah, I've traded this one before and actually I'm looking at it again. I'm kind of interested in it, but uh, we'll see whether or not I can get it down at my price. I like it down mid 19s, 19 and a quarter something like that. After the big gap up here with earnings, you can see the massive volume. To me, that's a really good sign of accumulation, especially as it continued going higher all the way up to 27 on this pullback, uh, or not really on a pullback, but this move up 27 on heavy volume, uh, I think looks really good. And then this sideways consolidation, this looks a lot like, uh, again, what we talked about with Bruce Fraser yesterday where we have this huge move up and that first move that comes down with heavy volume kind of establishes the trading range. And so I think it's just sideways consolidating. I think ultimately uh, this one has a pretty good shot to make another push back to the upside, and maybe break out above these recent highs. So, and I, I try to manage my risk. So I try to get these stocks as close to support as possible. And I think a key one is down around 19 a quarter, 19 and a half. So that's what I would be watching for on ESIO. All right. Our second one is going to be uh, MGM. All right, e MGM is in the um, gambling area, and I like the group. I just think we're getting, we've been sideways consolidating. We are trying to make a breakout, and we're going to need more volume. 
So I like the look of this chart, but I don't like the look of today's volume. So unless that picks up later this afternoon on a breakout, I would be a little careful. But you can see multiple tops going back the last several months at a rate about 34 and a quarter. And that's where we're sitting right now. So later today, if we get some volume coming in and we can make this breakout, say above 34 and a half, that would really get me bullish on this particular stock. So it's one that I keep on my radar for sure. All right. Uh, next one I have for you is NTR Nutrien Limited. All right, NTR, um, beautiful reversal off the 20 day moving average. I mean, this is, you know, textbook for me. Uh, nice breakout above prior price resistance. So you can see maybe right around 40, I could draw a couple lines, but that would be one. And then maybe right in here, you can see like a triple top. Well, really quadruple top coming across at 49. Got a temporary breakout. And we talked about this yesterday as well, uh, where you get a breakout and you pull back. You fail to hold the breakout, but then you hold that 20-day moving average and take off. Um, so you got a little bit of a false breakout, false breakdown, and then boom. Uh, nice little spring action there. But this pullback, actually, this reversal off the 20-day moving average, I find to be bullish. I think the stock could be accumulated from current price down to 50. And I would be looking initially at a target of 56, but the stock overall looks good. I would expect to break out eventually. All right. For our Canadian friends out there, AZ Mining. So that would be AZ.TO. Great. Uh, beautiful breakout. Love this breakout with the volume. Again, long-term uh, consolidation or at least intermediate-term consolidation where we just kind of Covered in this range, mostly kind of in that range. We had this one little dip here, but for the most part, we were uh, trend or uh, trading in a range from about 285 up to 365, and now we're making this breakout. I would expect that you're probably going to get another six to eight percent of this move to the upside, just based on a measurement, quick and dirty back uh, the napkin kind of calculation. But beautiful move up, great volume trends. We're overbought. No way I would be entering if I wasn't already in it but a pullback back to test price support and the rising 20 day moving average is what I would look for for entry. All righty. Let's see, our next one will be Berkshire Hathaway and BRK uh, slash B dot B. Yeah, Berkshire, uh, you know, looks great. Volume trends, uh, can't really complain here. So when I talk about volume trends, anytime you see a stock making a breakout and just solid volume. It's not off the charts, but it's just nice, solid volume to start the year on this move to the upside. I find that to be very bullish. I think to the downside, um, you've got really good long-term price support down closer to 190. And I think if we connect these lows, see probably that uh, trend line support isn't too far beneath that either. So yeah, 187 and a half to 190, something like that. Great price support now that we're well above that. We're very overbought. I would expect on a pullback that we probably would hold the 20 day moving average. But you know, if things really, if we really did uh, go through a period of a longer term pause, possibly we would get the stock back down to 190. I don't think I'd be holding my breath for that uh, at the moment. Instead, I would probably be looking for a short term trade off of that rising 20 day moving average. All right. Another one with a nice breakout, and I think we did talk a little bit about renewable energy, but TAN, which is the Guggenheim Solar ETF. Nice breakout yeah. from a flag there. I, it looks great. <laughs> yeah, I think this one looks uh, awesome. It's a group, uh, uh, an ETF that tracks that renewable energy space, which uh, I've talked about quite a bit um, over the past several days. But it's just, you know, when you connect these... Uh, the lows, you got a really nice trend line that continues in play um, and really wouldn't be violated unless we saw a move back maybe beneath uh, 24, 2375. It's been stair stepping up. You can see the prior highs when we break out, pullbacks have been holding that price support. Um, here you can see multiple support tests around 20 and a half before going higher. And so after this latest breakout, I would expect that you're going to see some price support. Um, in the 25 area, along with that rising 20 day. So you got you can look down and see different uh, levels of support. And it would depend on what kind of trader I am as to what I would use. 
for me, because I'm very short term, a pullback to test that rising 20 day would be entry for me with a tight stop below the the uh, price support area. Um, but longer term trade, I think you can certainly t at least give it room down to this trend line. All right. I have one. It's a little bit low volume, I know, for you, but uh, APPF, App Folio, sitting on some interesting uh, support. But I, I mean, my PMO top below the zero line, scooter is starting to fall off. So I don't know what I do with this. Well, it's downtrending. Um, it's trying to get back up through that 20 day moving average, but it's failed. Um, it could be a long term cup, you know, that eventually turns back to the upside. I think that the last key breakout for me uh, is probably down around this level. We had a big gap up on heavy volume, came down, filled this gap, and then took back off. We never have really come back down here. So that would be kind of a longer term support. Then you've got recent lows at 40. So for me, this is an accumulation zone. And uh, if it were, and where it is right now actually isn't too far from that zone. And you'd be looking for the possibility of a, of a return up to that level at 52. So re, re, uh, ward to risk looks pretty good here on APPF, but you're right. I mean, looking at the volume, it's probably something that I would pass on. All right. Uh, we were talking about international ETFs, but I don't think you looked at Turkey, T-U-R. Um, it's sitting on in the 20 day EMA and some uh, intermediate term support. Kind of interesting. Yeah, I like the bounce. I mean, it's bouncing today and it's bouncing exactly where I would expect. Um, anytime you get the uh, that uh, daily MACD showing the kind of um, momentum that we've got to the upside right now, and then you get a pullback right on that 20 day moving average like that, I think that's a great time to consider uh, entry if, if you're not in it. Um, because you can keep your, your stop really tight. So for me, you've got gap support at 42, the 20 uh, day moving average, maybe 42.75, 42.76 actually. So I could get in here, keep a very tight stop, maybe that gap support level, because if you lose that along with the uh, 20 day moving average, and um, that would be problematic, I guess, on two different fronts. But price momentum has been accelerating to the upside. And so this pullback into this area, I think, uh, was certainly a good opportunity for entry. All right, let's go ahead and look into the consumer staples area with K, Kellogg uh, Company. I, I've got a negative divergence on PMO tops and price tops, and it looks like it's heading down to uh, fulfill that uh, problem, and I would look for it to go lower. Yeah, the problem I have with consumer staples, not to the extent that I do with something like gold, but it's, it's underperforming the S&P 500. This is not the area... If you're trying to outperform the S&P 500, it just makes it more difficult when you're trading stocks that are part of a sector that are underperforming the S&P 500. So you've got a nice uptrend in play here. And I think maybe this downtrend has been broken. It just looks like we broke the downtrend line and then went back and retested it. I'll show you what I mean by that. You connect these highs coming down here. You can kind of see this trend line that we kept struggling. We finally got above it. Look, we came down and literally tested it. We broke out above it, tested it along with the 20 day, maybe just a little bit below the 20. And then we went back up and put a higher high. I think if I was trading the stock, I'd, I want to see a continuing series of higher highs and higher lows. This last high took out this high. So this, any kind of a move down here, I don't want to see it break below 55 or excuse me, $65 to the downside. So that's what I would be watching. That would be my line in the sand on Kellogg. I like it. I think it'll go higher. I just don't think if the market continues moving higher, I don't think it's going to move up as fast as many other stocks in the market. All right. And our final one, I think you talked about airlines somewhat, but in uh, specifically, how about uh, JETS, J-E-T-S? Yeah, that's the ETF um, to track airlines. And so I'm a fan. Obviously, it's not exactly as the, it's not made up or com composed of uh, the same companies as the index because the index we looked at earlier we were not getting a breakout above this july high and here we are so i'm not quite sure i don't know the makeup of this particular index but i do like the breakout and i'm going to take a look at a longer term chart here just to see if yeah we've we've cleared it on the long term and after having a negative divergence higher prices lower macd we did get that 50 uh, week 
SMA test, and we also got a reset at the center line before this move to the upside. So I think this group looks really good, and I guess to annotate it, I'm going to go back to that daily chart and uh, just show the breakout here. above that high and then maybe maybe right about in here you have some gap support pull back to fill that gap and then take off so i'm going to say 3150 to about 32 and a quarter is an area that i would like to see hold on any pullback but i love the breakout to the upside and uh based on what i said earlier about the airlines basing for the last three years i do think that this is a group if it makes that long-term breakout could run for a while and uh, so jets might be a great way to play it so I would, I'd be bullish, um, but make sure you keep your stops in play. All righty. And with that, that concludes our 10 and 10 to one. And you should be seeing a summary chart here. Uh, so I will be putting these in the Market Watchers week recap. And Tom will be sending me those annotated charts. So they will go into our Market Watchers live chart list. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and do our final market update. We'll take a little bit uh, more detailed look at what's going on. And here is uh, the, the candle glance. I've adjusted it somewhat um, to add a few more uh, to, uh, to put in uh, the TSX, uh, the FTSE. I think those are interesting to look at as well. Uh, but industrials, everybody is definitely moving higher. And the Russell 2000 in particular, and I do want to show you very quickly on our homepage, if I can get back there. Yeah, let's make it easier this way. All right. Uh, this is a great place to find your headlines. And so I'm going to go ahead and look at these headlines for today. And <clears throat> as you can see, new all-time highs being set. But this one I think was the interesting one because we have been talking about small caps uh, lagging just a bit behind the uh, larger cap uh, indexes. So I think that was an important one. Uh, so we'll look at that chart shortly. But let's look at our market summary and what's going on in our sectors. I think it's pretty clear based on what we've been talking about uh, so far, transports and again, small caps, S&P 600, Russell 2000 at the top. So we're getting some really nice uh, percent change moves here in comparison to some of the larger cap indexes, which are doing fine, but just not as well as the small caps. Energy, of course, leading uh, up over two and a quarter percent. Uh, utilities and consumer staples near the bottom. These tend to be a bit more in the defensive area of sector rotation. Uh, so to see discretionary energy, all of those starting to do well, that uh, bodes well for the market. And as far as industry, airlines, natural gas, oil services, uh, with oil hitting new uh, highs that we haven't seen for three years, uh, it's not a surprise to see them at the top. Utilities, REITs, and commodities uh, at the bottom. Uh, utilities and REITs, the only um, industry groups right now that we're showing in the negative. So I want to take a very quick peek. We'll look at the Russell 2000 since that, uh, that's what we're seeing uh, the big move on and hitting all-time highs. Let's look at a little bit of a longer-term chart here. Let's see. I need to move this over. There we go. All right. I need to get to my buttons here. So I'm going to go find my, there we go, our weekly chart. So yes, new all-time highs. Looking quite nice. The one thing I do like is when I look at uh, the PMO on the weekly chart for the Russell 2000, we're on a buy signal and we're not accelerating that quickly to the upside. But if you look in the thumbnail, we've had a few pullbacks on momentum, but it stayed above the signal line. And we're certainly not what uh, I would call overbought at this point. We still have plenty of room to move up to that uh, four and six point level for the PMO. So Russell 2000 is looking very good. And, you know, the hope is that that small caps will continue to do well uh, into the new year. And with that, that concludes the final market update. And it's time to get into one of uh, the favorite segments on the show, Anatomy of a Trade. But did you have any quick uh, comments on uh, the market? No, I think we just go right on into the anatomy of a trade and you've got the screen. So why don't you uh, go through uh, 
your trades first. Okay. I, I have two and uh, these are not actual trades that I made because I am more of an intermediate term trader. So I don't always have uh, actual real life uh, trades to show you, but I did pick out two Monday setups uh, that I've had before. So I'm going to start with the one that I picked this week, uh, Faro Technologies. And I'm pleased to say that I'm doing very well for this week on Faro. Uh, so I wanted to show you where it came in, uh, where I would have bought it more than likely, and where we have to, to look at different targets and such. So Far Faro came onto my radar through a PMO scan that I did on Monday. And it came in, I think I bought it, yeah. I've got it in here at 40, okay. I don't have it when we got it. <laughs> I can't remember where I bought this one. It was uh, 5110. 5110, okay. So we were above this area of support. So if I had gotten in at that point in time where I had gotten the, uh, the turnover here of the, the bottom on the PMO, so that would be that spot obviously that I would have gotten in. So my first, my first thing, is to honestly, the first thing I do is set up a target. Uh, I want to know where I want it to get to, so that I can, you know, pay attention. You know, I don't necessarily uh, put that in uh, my orders. It's usually a mental thing. Uh, so anyway, I would be looking my targets at 54. So if I got to 54, I would be probably selling at least half of my position, but it depends on, you know, what it looks like when it finally reaches that area. Does it go above it? Does it pull back when it reaches it? Uh, what does the PMO look like? There's a lot of things that would go into that decision once that I, once I hit the target. So this trade, I would say is still in play because obviously I picked it uh, Monday and so far so good. You know, we've got the PMO buy signal that's come in. We're looking at, uh, you know, decent volume pattern here when you're looking at the OBV, rising tops, rising bottoms, and of course a scooter in uh, the hot zone. So I know it's got a high batting average. It's, it's uh, internally strong in the intermediate to long term. And so that would have, that's about what the time I got in and looking at the thumbnail, I've got a flag formation and the height of the flag would actually put me above this area of overhead resistance at this previous November top, which is why when I hit that target, it'll be time to reevaluate. And so let me show you what I do as far as that reevaluation, because this is a, a good trade to go into so that you can see what, what to do when you hit some of these targets. So this is Aetna and I, uh, bought it paper trading, not real trading. This was a Monday setup and I put it, I bought in uh, at 162.28. That's when it came in on my, uh, on my uh, scan. You can see where it uh, dipped down here. The PMO was rounding off and coming into a buy signal. I was looking at a scooter that was rising like it, like it uh, did back here. You can see the volume patterns were going the right way. So this is why it ended up as a Monday setup and actually a Monday pick for me. So here we go, right? I, I bought it. It's actually uh, just above, uh, just below overhead resistance. Um, but I'd gotten that uh, the 20 had come down and it, it had uh, not uh, crossed below the 50. So I, I was thinking this would look pretty good. Obviously, I wouldn't have made it a, a Monday pick. So when I set it up, um, my target actually was about 180. And why is that? Because I have this uh, trading zone here. Um, this isn't a true double bottom, really, because it's coming in off of a, a rise. And you look for double bottoms. They're reversal patterns, so you need to come down into them. But this area of consolidation was pretty clear. And so my thought was that we would get a move at least the size of that previous range. So when I got the breakout and we did have that really nice uh, move, I can't remember if it was earnings or something came out, um, I believe at that point. And of course got the move and wow, it, it actually hit my target just a few days later, right? <clears throat> Still held it at that point, didn't close above the target. 
And of course we got that pullback, which was very nerve wracking. Um, but once I had gotten that, that move above, I needed to set my stop differently because I, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to lose out. Obviously, if I got that pullback, I needed to be out. Uh, if I came down to that area of overhead, previous overhead resistance and broken down below it. But you can see we tested the 20, it bounced off of that. So I was very comfortable in moving my new stop to about $165. And my original target, as I say, 180. So then you start watching. And of course, you've got uh, the PMO just took off, obviously, after some of these really nice moves. Well, as this was going, okay, it would ha have hit my radar basically after this uh, overbought PMO top coming down and giving me the sell signal. Uh, but where was I at at the time? I had a symmetrical triangle in play and symmetrical triangles are continuation patterns. So we also saw this 20 day EMA test and bounce. So I thought that was good and I'm still mid range. I'm still looking for my target up here. I know it hit it before and I'm now in a continuation pattern. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it going. So at that point, we got the breakout at that original target and we got the close. So at that point, half, my, half of it would have been uh, sold. Uh, I hit that first target. And then I would start watching to see if I wanted to add on or if I wanted to um, stay uh, just with that half position or need to sell. Well, now I'm looking at this, was the bottom of this uh, symmetrical triangle. Uh, you could use these tops, but I was, I was looking at this uh, rising bottoms trend line, liked that it was holding. Similarly, the 20 day EMA was holding. Now I got the breakout here, but it, it really stalled. It really stalled at that original target. Um, but I'd already seen the PMO starting to drop and what was going on with uh, the, the bottoms on price? We had a little bit of a negative divergence here going, I would say, right? Uh, so this was, this was the point in time to watch, to keep an eye on it, because now we were hitting that area. Um, we we're getting ready to test the 20, getting ready to test that rising bottoms trend line. Passed through it, got that, uh, that uh, signal that we were back in business that uh, rising bottoms trend line was holding. Uh, at that point, uh, I would consider, that would be your time to consider, do I wanna add back to the position? But I would have gone down here and looked at the PMO topping below the signal line and likely would not have added to the position. More than likely I would have held on and watched that uh, original target of 180 and the uh, rising bottoms trend line to see if we got a break. So that's uh, my two uh, paper trades and how I would have traded them. And I know you have a little bit different style, plus you're a short-term trader, so I know you're in and out a lot faster. This one is a more intermediate term trade. Obviously, this is a hold for you know at least almost two months. Yeah, very little chance I'm gonna be in anything for two months. I, I would either get too bored with it if it wasn't going anywhere or <laughs> Um, if it makes a move to the upside, I'm generally going to take my money if I get close to resistance and try to redeploy it somewhere else. Right. Um, because the problem is, and I think perfect example on the one that you had given there with um, the big move up, um, is that it came all the way back down to test that support level. So, and that a lot of times is what stocks do. They make their breakout and then they pull back and you have an opportunity to get in a second time. So that's why I'm not I don't really hesitate too long to take the profits when I get a move to the upside. Um, I've got a few stocks and these are all stocks right now that I'm still holding, but one here, this is a finish line. I think I talked about this one maybe last week at some point. Um, but anyway, after breaking out and all of these stocks, by the way, have beaten wall street estimates, top line and bottom line, they go into my strong earnings chart list. I like the look of their charts and then I just simply wait to try to get them at a price point that I think is a, a much better reward to risk entry. So here we got the gap up with earnings, nice volume. Stock kept going higher, so it went on my list and I just waited. And when it came back down and hit the top of gap support at about 13 and a quarter or 1330, I didn't go back and look at the uh, entry point, but it was right at about this level here um, with a second entry on the 20-day uh, moving average. 
And actually, it might have been below the 20 day. I might have gotten close to the bottom of this tail. But anyhow, I think my average entry was somewhere around 13 bucks. And finish line has started to move back up. My target would be back up near that recent high at $15. But again, I can sometimes get impatient because I don't want to hold a stock while it goes through a long consolidation period. So if, if later today or sometime tomorrow, this stock is at 14 or 14 and a half, there's a good chance I might just take it and not wait for $15 because as the stock moves higher, your risk actually grows holding it. If you're in a stock at 13 and you're looking to get to 15 and you have a 50 cent stop, then you've got a lot more reward to the upside than you do risk to the downside. But once you start making this move to the upside and you're making money, the risk actually starts to flip a little bit. Even at $14, I'd be looking at maybe a dollar more in reward. But if I kept my stop at 12.50 or even that rising 20 day moving average, I actually have more risk to the downside. So I think that's uh, something to keep in mind, but I still like FINL. Uh, one stock you mentioned earlier, and I would, I would take a little different position than I think you had taken on SPWR. Because to me, I think this stock, it was in a very bullish pattern. I know that you had kind of drawn a uh, descending triangle. Actually, I like all triangles off of uptrends, mm -hmm. but I do think the ascending triangle is more bullish than the descending triangle. So I would go there. But I think uh, on SPWR, what I see, and a lot of different folks look at charts differently, and I think that's fine. Um, but what I was seeing was actually a bullish wedge. So here on the tops, uh, declining, but the bottoms were not declining nearly as rapidly. So what I see is a big move up on heavy volume and a bullish wedge develop with lighter volume. So I've been waiting for this breakout and getting it today. My question is whether or not I'm going to sell at 950. There's a lot of overhead resistance. Stock hit 945 earlier today, and actually Aaron and I were talking about it earlier um, because I'm going to go over Square in just a minute. And Square was one that I might have been out of. Uh, if I wasn't prepping for the show and I was actually trading, I might have been out of it. Um, but I'll, I'll look at that in just a second. But I think this is a very bullish breakout, and the volume is coming back in to confirm this. So now the only question for me is whether or not we can get through 950. The thing that I, I probably will hold because I love this space, the renewable energy space. If it was in a group that maybe was hitting resistance or just didn't look great, then I'd probably take my money and run and be happy. But I think with this being in renewable energy and seeing crude oil break out, knowing that this space tends to do well and the volume trends, the bullish pattern break out, I will probably hold it, but I'm not going to commit to that. <laughs> my, my opinion can change from hour to hour. Uh, as a short-term trader. But uh, you know, if, the thing that would really bother me is if intraday we get up to $10 and then we come back down and close at 945 and leave a long tail to the upside, that would definitely get me out of the stock. But uh, otherwise, I'll probably end up holding. A couple others. One I mentioned yesterday um, when we had um, Bruce on the show, and uh, Bruce actually convinced me to hold it. I was trying to, I, was, I just needed a little bit of convincing to hold it. Uh, GNRC, and I'm hoping that this is a spring that he had talked about after a big move up, sideways consolidation, this reaccumulation phase. Then we break down just barely, briefly, one day. And now today the stock's up 3.5% uh, roughly back into this, this zone. So I'm hoping that this is the spring that just sends this thing catapulting back up to 54. Just let me, you know, beg for a little while here. <laughs> um, next up is Square. I do still own some of this. I sold two thirds of it, but Square on the way down, first of all, I saw these tails with the big volume coming in. And actually I kind of spotted 34 to 35 being a really key support level on Square. And so if you take a look at those tails and then of course there was a breakout here, there was a number of reasons, but uh, this was an area as it started to settle down, I expected that it would hold, or at least I was hoping it would hold and so I built it up to a position around 35, 36. And what I love to see is a breakout back above the 20, which had been failing. Check out ever since this broke above the, the 20 day moving average, you can see that the buyers are back in. Now, the thing that I'm looking at on, on uh, Square right now is that this could be an inverse head and shoulder. Move up, pull back, and then the move back up to test this 43 level would put in the left side of a neckline. Coming down, we put in the head. We could be testing the right side of the neckline here. I think that open was at 43.20. So 43.20 is what I would be looking for. Um, it'll just depend. I mean, again, I kind of follow what Aaron was saying. I think if we get a nice 
finish today and we're breaking through that level, then I probably would look at the top of this red candle. But otherwise, I think this one looks pretty good. And let's see, what else did I have here? Um, actually, CLDR came up as a hammer two or three days ago. And then I was fortunate enough yesterday, we caught a um, uh, an upgrade. But here's another move up. Very heavy volume on earnings, sideways consolidation, holding on to gap support. And the hammer was actually, I'm going to shorten this chart so that you can see this. It was the only one that came up on my strong earnings chart list a couple of days ago, but it's right here. So you can see the move down below the 20 day moving average. We came back up and held it. And that just looked like maybe this thing was ready to make a move. Uh, the next day, just kind of sideways consolidated and then got an upgrade yesterday, which was nice. Still in this one, but uh, I think this one's going to go probably up to about the 19, 19 and a quarter area. That was my original target. And let's see, what else do we have? Uh, here are a couple that I just recently made. GDOT, I got in one day too soon, I think. Um, here was the breakout. We pulled back. I actually bought on this pullback on Tuesday, thinking that the 20 day moving average would probably hold. And we were literally ready to make this move. And then we came down yesterday getting a little bit of it back today, but I'm down on this one, uh, at least for now. Um, one of my setups from this earlier this week, EVRI, I've been waiting to get this move above the 20. This to me looks a lot like squares chart where you, you move down, volume picks up a little bit, uh, still in an uptrend, sideways consolidation, what well, doesn't quite look like square because it didn't go up nearly as much, but um, it was struggling at the 20. And what I had mentioned in the setups was watch for this move to move back up through the 20 day moving average. So I was actually able to get this one earlier today. So I, my stop on this one now will be the 20 day moving average. So if it closes back below the 20, I'll get out. Otherwise I'll keep riding it. And the other one I bought today was STRL. And I bought this one after hitting price support yesterday and printing a doji. So this one's gone up. This is another one I might've exited if I'd been at if i'd been watching when it hit the 20 day moving average but obviously it'd be more bullish to get back through the 20 otherwise it will probably consolidate between the 20 day moving average and this price support area down here around 14 14 and a quarter um, and then the last three these are not stocks that i own so i'm going to just go through these very quickly but these were uh hammers that printed yesterday i didn't buy any of them but uh form went below the 20 day moving average had a nice hammer on the 20 and it's up a little bit today uh, of the three, ACLS is the one I like the best. I did not get it though. Uh, well, actually it's down today, so I'm glad I didn't get it, but here was the move <laughs> up. Um, it did pull back, put a nice hammer in right on that 20 day moving average. And I was looking for this to make another push to the upside. I would probably keep a stop though on this one around the tail from yesterday, or give it a little bit more room. You've got gap support that's been holding. Um, and then the final one was, uh, uh VMW, VMware software stock and here you can see this one actually has been an uptrend came down tested that rising 20-day moving average printed a hammer and actually is breaking out today so those were a few others but um yeah so those were some of the uh, trades that uh i have made or, or i'm holding at this point and we'll see whether or not they you know materialize into winners by the end um, i do want to point out though if you're interested in those trade setups i do post them in my blog trading places uh, every Monday morning. So you can always go in there and take a look at them. Awesome. Yeah. So with that, we got just a couple minutes, actually maybe one minute left. What do you think of the action today? And well, you know, I've been looking for some sideways action or a pullback. I'm kind of thinking yesterday with that, that big open down, that might've been all of the, the pullback or, um, well, if you want to call it that, that we're going to get, uh, the market doesn't seem to care about much of anything except going up. So, We'll see what uh, how I feel tomorrow. Yeah, I, I'm still bullish. I stay bullish. I, I know this time of the month tends to be a little bit of a profit-taking period, but the market just simply doesn't show any signs. I thought yesterday with the news out about China maybe slowing or halting its U.S. Treasury purchases, that that might be something that would at least uh, create some selling in the market. But literally, we saw futures down, and then from the opening bell, we came right back up again. And ended up finishing just barely in negative territory. So it just doesn't seem to be anything to keep the market down right now. Nope. Looking forward to seeing what it'll do tomorrow, though. Yep. And as uh, Aaron just showed on the screen there, we do have a couple of quick announcements just to make that uh, tomorrow I will go through my 2018 stock market forecast. If you're interested, 
uh, mark it on your calendar and join me tomorrow. And Greg Schnell will be uh, doing the Stock Charts Outlook webinar Saturday, 11 a.m. So uh, certainly check that out. I'm sure uh, Greg would love to have you. And uh, one last reminder, Monday is Martin Luther King Day. Markets are closed. And as a result, Market Watchers Live will not be here on Monday, but we will be back on Tuesday. And with that, uh, I think it's a wrap. So I want to thank everybody for being with us today. Please remember to complete the survey as you exit. Lower right-hand part of your screen, you'll see how do we do. Click on that link. It's a very brief one-question survey. Um, and feel free to give us suggestions for future shows, just like we did the drilling down today. That was a new feature. As a reminder, Market Watchers Live airs five days a week, Mondays through Fridays from noon to 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a great Thursday afternoon, everybody. See you on Friday. Happy trading. Thank you.